Hoopers, this is Shay Ribbinger here of Hip the Hoopla, and this is welcome to the Hoopla of Y'all show. And with me today, I have an ultra special guest who is visiting from out of town. This is Ann Humphreys, the infamous of Lion's Hi. Circle, <laughs> and she just did a fabulous workshop in Denver yesterday, um, doing on body and core hooping, which is so essential to not only fundamentals, but I'd say advanced practice too. Because what you were doing yesterday, especially with the hip rotations, was pretty uh, mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. So th the theme of tonight's show is Imagine. So we're going to kind of loosely run off of that theme, and we'll do some freestyle talking. Again, we cover health, humor, and hooping here, as you can see by the wall, and see by two hoopers sitting here. But we'll, we'll keep it kind of fun, campy, and all kinds of stuff. So, and, um, and if you uh, have any questions, if you want to go to the Facebook group, and type your questions in and we can see them live. I won't be able to type to respond to them live, but we can um, respond to them live on the video. Mm -hmm. So, all right, with that, I normally do a laughter yoga exercise to kind of warm us up, which is all kind right. of fun. So, we'll just take, <laughs> this is gonna be fun with two people, this is gonna be awesome. Okay, so what we do is we just take a nice deep breath in, mm -hmm. and you can open up your eyes for this one, mm -hmm. and then we're just, as we exhale, we're gonna laugh down. <laughs> Callie Puppy is already amused. You know what I mean? <laughs> Can you see this is catchy? <laughs> One more time. You know what I mean? <laughs> For those of you that are new to this, and also at the end of laughter yoga exercises, we take our hands together nice and big and we clap. Very good, very good, yay. And we do that twice. Very, very good, good, very good, yay. yay. Very, very good, very good, good yay. yay. And then uh, I've got little Callie in here. I'm not going to pick her up today because she's having some um, health issues and she might get a little skittish. Hmm. But trust that she is wandering around, little blue eyes, my little boo, uh, <laughs> because she has little blue eyes. Um, but anyway, so if you hear little footsteps in the background, that's her. So, all right, on the, uh, I, I wanted to start out with a, a little quote here. Um, because on the imagine theme, although this says imagination, um, but the quote is, and I, we all know the quote, imagination is more important than knowledge. Like, most of us have heard that quote. See, we already have hats, hearts and smiley faces <laughs> running across the screen. And that quote is by Einstein. Uh, when I looked it up today, just to reconfirm and do my fact-checking, I didn't know there was uh, the rest of the quote. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's cool. So I'm going to read the rest of the quote. Um, so it starts out, imagination is more important than knowledge. For knowledge is limited, whereas imagination embraces the entire world, stimulating progress, giving birth to evolution. Mm -hmm. It's like, whoa. yes, yeah, yeah. Let that one sit here, yeah, like, that whoa, is my man. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, you know, I know pr probably, you know, we all have our ways of getting started in hooping and ways of getting started in all kinds of different things. Um, did you ever imagine yourself here and doing what you're doing? And because mm. you've had this as a career for how many years now? Well, as a career, let's say uh, eleven years. Eleven years. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yes. Yeah, and I've been hooping for thirteen years, and I did not imagine it now. Yeah. And I started hooping at the age of thirty-five. Wow. Mm -hmm. See, see, see. <laughs> And may I ask, how old are you now? I am 48. 48. I mm -hmm. beat you. <laughs> I'm 52. <laughs> we, as I like to say, I'm going to use a little curse word here, we make this shit look good. <laughs> <laughs> and it feels good. <laughs> it does feel good. Uh, and, yeah, and we get told that all the time, so, which is a great honor and compliment. Yes, to, it is. You yes, know, it is. Although, I, I've heard this said before, you know, like when somebody says, you look good for your age. Mm. You know, it's like, why yeah. do you have to then, put then a little, it feels a little bit like, different. Well, passive aggressive part <laughs> on the compliment there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't think they, they realize that, but anyway. <laughs> so, um, oh, I also want to do a shout out to, uh, yeah, uh, today, because it's the 11th, is my angel mama's birthday, so June 11th, mm -hmm. and, um, um, and then also shout out to my husband, mm -hmm. who we met seven years ago today, uh, yesterday. Wow. Yesterday, so that was our like seven year, and we're not itching. Okay, so technically I'm yes. itching at this right, you know, but y'all know that story <laughs> if you followed the videos. But anyway, not itching in the relationship, mm -hmm. but just to be mm -hmm. clear. So um, well, that's impressive. Yeah, that so, is. Yeah, for y'all. Yeah, thank you, yeah. thank you. Yes. 
So, um, okay, so when I was in your workshop yesterday, um, we were working on some interesting core hooping maneuvers. Mm -hmm. And as you were doing the things, okay, also as a side note, I, I run off on tangents sometimes. Mm -hmm. When I got there, a friend of mine who I haven't seen in years and years, Natalie Francois, yes. uh, was there. Mm -hmm. Now, the funny thing part is, full circle on this, mm -hmm. is that one of the moves that you were working on when you saw me point across the circle mm -hmm. to her, mm -hmm. because she taught me that so that I finally got the move, which was Ooh. getting the leg hooping with the kick up. Yeah. And so how she got in, I had had lots of people try and explain it to me, mm -hmm. and it was just not getting into my brain any, any mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine it mm -hmm. happening, <laughs> so, mm -hmm. or, or however I was imagining it wasn't working in reality. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Anyway, she, she gave me like the kind of magic things that I needed to make the make that all happen. Mm -hmm. But she had this little shimmy that she did with her hips that went up and up and up and up. Mm -hmm. And um, and I just did a little uh, tutorial video on that last week, and I did cover that last week in uh, last week's show. Mm -hmm. So um, in a little bit more detail of how I teach it. You know, we all have different teachers, mm -hmm. uh, and Anne teaches it in a different way, and it was really. Um, an eye-opening experience as well to, to hear that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so she was doing that, and I told her, and I never told her this story. I said, I haven't seen you in years. I said, I remember, you know, because I wanted her to credit credit her for helping me with that and how much that meant to me. Mm -hmm. And I said, all I did was sit there and watch her hips and watch them and watch them and watch them. And I said, and you had the cutest butt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she liked it. She just <laughs> giggled and giggled and stuff, and, and you know, because we both think that's funny. So, but, so I was watching you yesterday, mm -hmm. and I was like, I kept on thinking as you're demonstrating the moves, going, is that the body you get from hooping? Because people <laughs> ask me that all the time. Yeah, and, yeah, know, it is, it is a, a common us, question. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. a lot of us do multiple things mm -hmm. to achieve whatever we do and how we get there. So it may mm -hmm. look like just this thing on the surface, mm -hmm. but we, we have other things that we do to get there. Mm -hmm. And after, when we went out for dinner last night, you revealed that you do weightlifting and yes. powerlifting in particular, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So, which explains her really cute butt. So I'm just gonna say <laughs> it right it, now. It? Yeah, I'm like, does it explain? She, she had beautiful shorts what on too that ex accentuated the, you know. So I mean, but she's got beautiful arms, and so for for any women out there that okay. think that um, that yeah, like having great arms, yes, like, or for like women. looking muscular is mm -hmm. a bad thing, you know. Definitely not, and uh, I always wanted to have Angela Bassett arms mm, because she mm, had like these beautiful mm, guns, you know, when she got buff for um, uh, mm. the 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 Tina Turner story mm -hmm. movie. So mm -hmm. anyway, but you were explaining some of the things you do with that, and mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I found that fascinating. Mm -hmm. you wanna oh sure, yeah, that? I'll be happy to. So I um, I started lifting weights, and well, so before. Before I started lifting weights, I actually didn't do anything in particular to make my body look in any particular way. Okay. I have very athletic genes. You know, I have two grandparents that were athletes. Nice. And what kind of sports or Well, athletics? I have one grandfather who he excelled in sprinting okay. as a young man. And then my grandmother, my, my mother's mother, mm -hmm. she was very, um, she was, she did tennis, golf, t um, swimming basketball she was just really excelled in everything i mean Basically of course like she, superwoman you know she just really i mean she just superwoman was very just she was very family. strong you know yeah. she was always but she was also very slight mm. you know she was very wiry okay and so anyway that that being said so so for a long time i was just hooping and sort of you know dancing and doing my my usual thing but then i had a period of time where okay so i'll i'll confess that i was smoking cigarettes for you know stress smoking for a period of months mm -hmm. which and it might have been several months but um what happened was my appetite just disappeared and that was really um awful and then when i stopped smoking so i stopped smoking mm -hmm. 2 years ago forever Never again. <laughs> Hashtag Radical never again. Yes. Yeah, seriously. I mean, really. Yeah. That is deadly. It is deadly. So, you heard it here. I have a friend. I'm tr I keep trying to convince her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Allow yourself to be convinced. <laughs> so, um, so then my appetite, and then after I stopped, it did not come back. And so I was kind of stuck at this. I was, you know, close to 10 pounds less than I am now. Mm -hmm. And so it was not looking good. And mm -hmm. like my... 
you know, my bones like were just in. jutting out. Yeah. My bones, you know, and my elbow really looked like a sheet of paper, like the edge of a sheet wow. of paper. Yeah, it was bad. And so um, about a year ago, I decided, you know, I need to do something. I need to try to gain weight. How does somebody gain weight? I didn't even know that people lifted weights to gain weight mm, until okay. a year ago. Okay. And I um, asked on Facebook. Okay. And then um, several people chimed in, but then I had a good friend in town who told me about powerlifting, mm -hmm. took me to the gym, and showed me some of it, This is like the powerlifting prep. So okay. there, it's the, the exercises that you would do to prepare for the full lift. This is not the full. I'm not doing the Olympic lift. Okay. You know, I'm doing... What's considered the Olympic lift? The Olympic lift is it's like a snatch and something. It's okay. where you okay. you take it um, you take yeah, it like from the pull, floor. Yeah. So there's like stages to okay. it. You take it from the floor and then you then you pick it up from the floor. You then you have to okay. yeah. take it here. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of right. swivel it back here. Then you have to push it up. Okay. Press it up. Okay. So what I do is I do the the deadlift from the floor, mm -hmm. and then I do also the overhead press, which you can do with a rack. Okay. And then I also and do a spotter. Use a spotter. Yeah, that is like yes, having exactly. a don't, ju don't just go into the gym and <laughs> yeah, try powerlifting. Right, right. Definitely get a trainer and you know an experienced person to walk through with you at least once, if not more than once. And last week we covered uh, go pro tips, and one mm -hmm. was hire a pro, and that's yes. one of the reasons so you don't hurt yourself, so you don't you know yes. go in once and then you're out for six months with an injury or two or three. Yes, and especially with powerlifting, you can injure yourself. And unlike Very hooping, you know where it can you know you really have to kind of work to injure yourself in hooping. I mean, you know you can you can <laughs> I can debate that. But I have I mean, a nail broken for almost every practice. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, you can really hurt yourself with yeah, lifting yeah, weights. So, so yeah. you just want to be really careful. Yeah. You don't want a hernia. You don't, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. you, you just really want to be careful. Right. And so, yeah. And so I do, um, I also do um, chin lifts. You know, chin, chin ups. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then the bench press. Okay. Yeah. Bench press. And right. then something called rows, which mm -hmm. is where you are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. it's, I hate rows, Move, actually. Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. I, me too. Yeah. I really hate that one. And okay. I've been using the calf machine as well because right. once I started to, you know, I did start to gain weight and I, my appetite did come back and it yes. came surging back and it was mm -hmm. amazing. And then... And in a healthy way because also after mm -hmm. you, I, I find that like if you do do the work, a workout of, and I use workout in quotes, that definitely going to the gym is more of that. But, you know, like hooping, I try not to call it a workout because yes. I want people to remember that it's supposed to be fun and whatever it is for you, for some people it's spiritual, for some people it's meditation, whatever. Mm -hmm. But that, um, that, you know, you're really you know, mm -hmm. taking that, that, those precautions and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I just do, I just do these, these lifts and I, twice a week, that's enough for me. Mm -hmm. You need to rest in between and yep. allow your body to heal. Because yeah. you're shredding the muscles, mm -hmm. you're ripping them apart, and then you're letting them rebuild stronger. Yes. Mm -hmm. Kind of like breaking a bone and then let, letting it repair and supposed to be stronger in that area. I don't yes. recommend doing that. Don't do, mm -hmm. don't try that at home. <laughs> Humor in this show. There's lots of humor in there. We try and keep it lighthearted. <laughs> and there's also, I've also been doing the um, Wim Hof method. Okay. So in addition to the weightlifting, mm -hmm. the Wim Hof method is about lowering your body temperature on a regular basis. And that stimulates the regrowth of brown fat, which is the subcutaneous fat between your skin and muscles, which is... I'm feeling um, Einstein-esque now. <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know about brown fat until I started reading about Wim Hof because I was like, you know, I mean, and my quest was like, how can I keep my elbow from looking like a sheet of, edge of a sheet of paper? I mean, I was just kind of like, I need some healthier. Like, I, I never thought I would have this problem. I mean, you know, it's like women were raised to be terrified of putting on one pound, you know? So it was like, I, I was, I grew up with this mentality of like, don't gain weight, right. you know, and you know, you have to control your appetite and you have to, you know, and then mm -hmm. kind of getting to a point where my body, I just became so active that my body just started to, I don't know, I got to a different equilibrium, you know, the body seeks right. homeostasis. Yeah. And yeah. so I got to this lower equilibrium and then, you know, your, your sub, your brown fat, your subcutaneous fat disappears along with your muscle tissue as you age. If you don't... And you want to have the brown fat. Yes. Is the brown right? fat, okay. it it's insulates you. And so I started... The, re the way it, I started to realize what was going on was that I was getting... I was freezing cold. Hmm. Okay. Even after I started to put muscle back on, I would still get these chills. And it was like, why am I getting more chilled? I didn't used to get this chilled. Mm -hmm. And then I learned that this fat, you know, your body consumes it. Okay. As life goes on. And so it's like, at this point, I just didn't have very much left. So you have to stimulate, re-stimulate your body into growing it. Okay. 
Yeah, and the, and so you're and, supposed to grow fat. Okay? Yeah, exactly. I know it's like <laughs> counterintuitive, right, right? but yeah. But yeah, that's been... it's not like cellulite. We don't have to grow mm. cellulite. <laughs> yeah, I mean this fat. I mean, I Different. really, I, I, I could just tell the difference. I just had never been that thin before, but I could really tell, like, oh, my bones, like the edges of my bones, really are. Mm -hmm. You know, our our bones are like cushioned. I mean, that that fat is there for a reason. It's, and it's brown fat because it has mitochondria and okay. um, organelles and you know capillaries and you know it's it's an it's an organism. It's like it's actually. Um, has the relationship to the connective tissue. Okay. Yeah, which like we fascia. all know is very important, the fascia. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, and another thing that I, I, most people do know that this, but like when you start lifting weights, you, you might gain weight. Yes. But that's okay because I think a lot of times that might happen and, you know, a lot of times we're, we're obsessed to look at a number on a scale, mm -hmm. but we should look at how we feel. Mm -hmm. or, or notice how we feel like do you feel better do you have more energy in the morning can you breathe better can you uh, do things for a longer period of mm -hmm. time how's your endurance and mm -hmm. how you know also I base it on happiness levels mm -hmm. too. yes very important most important thing because how you feel yeah it um, I think with hooping with you were mentioning with the weightlifting mm -hmm. the endorphin rush mm -hmm. from adding weight yes when you know you you accomplish these milestones yes and yeah. much like getting a new hoop move or, you know, whatever your goal may be in life. It could be hooping. It could be weightlifting. It could be, mm -hmm. you know, something at your job or whatever. But whatever those, it doesn't even have to be a huge goal. But, mm -hmm. you know, just something that is like a new personal best. I had, I mm -hmm. almost bested myself mm -hmm. on my hoop making record yeah. the other day. And I was like, <gasps> I didn't quite make it. But I'm like, okay, my record is still pretty darn good, yes. you know, for, for what I think. Still you pat know. yourself on the back. I, you know, try mm -hmm. not to break that, you know, doing that. And another thing to think about as far as weightlifting and weight gain mm -hmm. is that, you know, all you have to do is just Google an image of scale, you know, a pound of fat versus a pound of muscle tissue. And you'll see that, you know, it takes a lot more fat to make a pound of fat mm -hmm. than it does muscle tissue to make a pound of muscle tissue. So as you put on muscle tissue, your body's, it's not like, it's you like know, a compression rather than an expansion. Like yes. ex fat just expands out. It's fluffy. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I mean, and, you know, and it, and it might, you know, be in places you don't want it. But when you're True. building muscles, it tends to be in places where you, you, you might want some, some definition. So, yeah, again, like weight gain is not the scale of the ultimate scale right. of how, how healthy or well you are. Yeah. And, of mm -hmm. course, you know, also when you're building more muscle, then your body is in a much better metabol uh, mm -hmm. metabolism, mm -hmm. burning your calories. So, like, for instance, if you work out and, uh, work out and then eat... Mm -hmm. I think that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. Then your calories go, mm -hmm. you know, they're just metabolized way better, more mm -hmm. efficiently. Mm -hmm. So, and your energy goes further. So, and, and, but that, that endorphin rush, the, you know, the energy that you get, how much better you feel, mm -hmm. all of these things. And also the, the neat thing about that was I found that, you know, fascinating that all of us have our own journeys that we go on and the things that we find that we like. Mm -hmm. So for instance, we both have a love of hooping that mm -hmm. is a deep, deep-seated love, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a love affair, right? We call that a love affair with hooping. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you do it, you understand. You mm -hmm. know, I always warn people. I'm like, okay, I have to tell you something about hooping. And they all go, uh-oh, what? And I said, it's highly, it can be highly addictive. <laughs> and they're like, oh, oh, okay. watch out. <laughs> and I'm like, it's true, <laughs> it's true. Two hours was all it took for me. And then I really? was like, I was mm -hmm. doing this for the next three days. You know, just <laughs> for doing the waist hoop thing. I didn't even have a waist hoop. I just did the movement mm -hmm. to simulate yeah. what that was. Yeah. It was kind of like the um, getting on the train or getting off a train after you've been on a train for a day or so. Yeah. And that, that gentle rocking motion yeah. that, you you know, it's almost like messes with your equilibrium when you're on a train and you mm -hmm. can't get rid of it and you want to get rid of it. But with hooping, it's this gentle rhythm that mm -hmm. can be highly meditative for mm -hmm. a lot of people. And, you know, people find mm -hmm. um, their ways, uh, you know, I, I help a lot of people with, you know, healing through hooping and yes. I've done that with myself and, you know, and um, many people know my story of my, uh, that mm -hmm. I got into hooping right around the time when my mom got sick mm -hmm. and she, um, she you know, uh, so just even having my hoops around like brightly colored plastic circles, mm -hmm. I had them at work and people would just walk by them and smile. Mm -hmm. And even though I couldn't hoop at work, I mean, it turns out I could have, but I didn't want to because I didn't know that I could hoop in a small space. Now I can do that. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. but, um, I had big heavy hoops then, which we were using yesterday to get back to the, the roots of, mm -hmm. 
Uh, and you actually said root chakra mm -hmm. cooking. Mm -hmm. And it was a really um, fascinating demonstration. I also mm -hmm. wanted to bring up a, a good point about the, the butt thing because mm -hmm. that because I was thinking, is there a way to accomplish some of those things in hooping? So I was trying that in my hoop practice mm -hmm. this morning with doing some you know, lower hooping, mm -hmm. where you're just bending yeah. the knees and really um, tensing, and, and not tensing up, but um, activating the muscles. Yeah. So like when you're waist hooping, to activate the abdominal wall and pull it in so you're not just, you know, yes. and doing that kind of thing, but really pulling up and keeping your posture really engaged, mm -hmm. but also like sinking into things with that. But you were doing the hip rotation, which I normally mm -hmm. would think... It helps the hoop go down because that's what it has and then yesterday was kind of like a mm -hmm. nice little imaginative eye-opening mm -hmm. revelation of like trying to get that because also you did it with um almost like a dance step per se mm -hmm. of like mm -hmm. taking your how did you say it lead forward leading and following leading, leading and, following and following yes with the legs mm -hmm. with the feet and um and then we did it with the arms as well so she if you ever have the Pardon me, the, the chance to take one of Ann's workshops or work with her online or how, you know, she comes through one of your towns. Grab her. She's really wonderful. She's very nice. Uh, there's very few mean. I've run into very few mean hoopers in the world. True. I, well, as a lot, we're pretty nice. Um, True. Very, hoopers are just awesome. Just neat people, you know. We're pretty, pretty, mm -hmm. pretty open and accepting of one another and all kinds of stuff. So, yes. Which is a lovely thing. Yes. So, so yeah, um, on that Imagine scale... What's, was mm -hmm. that? No, I'm just, my, my hair, like, it's oh. going in front of my eye. <laughs> yes. We have wardrobe, and yeah, like, sometimes I test out, like, before I have wardrobe malfunctions, but then mm -hmm. a lot of times I don't, like, road test, like, yeah. especially performance gear, and I'm like, Ooh, I, but you gotta that's, do that. that's what, here's a pro tip from, la I didn't even do this one last week, but I call it double brawing, and, like, oh, but today I do that, uh -huh. you know, so, because I have belly dancer friends, and I had one belly dancer friend that, it, you know, they have these beautiful... Uh, beaded uh, belly dance bras that mm -hmm. might be like three hundred dollars, oh, yeah. you know, or yeah. just exorbitant amounts of money that are custom made, custom fitted. Anyway, um, they can come loose, yeah. and even if you pin them and stuff like that. So this one gal, she she did the the best pro thing I've ever seen, mm -hmm. and I'd never seen this done before. But she uh, her I I don't remember if her boob fell out or mm -hmm. not, but she grabbed the 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 belly dance cup. She know. <sighs> Oh. Walked off stage, just like, mm -hmm. like you know, like it was. She never lost face. Yes, exactly. Which was amazing. Yes, and she staying in the moment. She did, and she walked off stage. Uh, the music kept going. She came. Uh, she fixed it. Uh, somehow, it got fixed very quickly. Mm -hmm. She came back out. She finished the routine. So she came in wherever her choreography was, mm -hmm. and um, at the end. So um, she just like always stayed in character of mm -hmm. her confidence, mm -hmm. and then at the very end, it was so funny because she did this um, funny thing. I have to get in the camera for this, but she was like la 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 and did the bow, and then just went. <laughs> <laughs> like, so she acknowledged that it happened but it was just so awesome so it was you know you know mm -hmm. I like to deal with things with a little sense of humor here mm -hmm. so um and that that was just like the most awesome use of humor and you know making the best out of a not great situation yeah and stuff. So yeah just on a funny note you know mm -hmm. <laughs> I like funny stories but you know that one actually you know well of course the, the stories are they're funny because they're true and they happen so uh, yes you know, right so anyway. exactly so mm -hmm. so shall we get to a little bit of hooping here too, sure so? are you gonna i mean well i guess you'll see me um yeah so better let's see here remove the chairs out of the way are people people can ask hooping questions or they can if i see i see I mean, jordane maybe. is on there and i'm looking at, oh, let's see how many things i can knock over here yeah. okay. just a Let's few stay. things can i move these um yes you sure can Okay, we're gonna do a little rearranging of things, so uh, bear with us here. <laughs> so go ahead and start whenever you want. You can okay. stand yourself in the frame. Lord. Let me move okay. this. I might need to move this out of the way even more. Yeah, the chair maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so even though I've done lots of interviews in my media career from, it's one of my careers from my past life. Okay. Um, this is my first, well, because this is a, still a fairly new show, uh, but this is my first, mm. you know, w my first guest. Really? So, yeah, wow, how I awesome. I know, right? Fantastic. Yeah. 
and you know when you get a good get because that's what we call it in the media world uh you know this is this is a really good get <laughs> we say get in this. <laughs> there you go. oh yeah by the way she's from north carolina y'all <laughs> This is called the Hoop Love Y'all Show. So. <laughs> That's right. And That's I, right. I spell it funky on purpose, too, because yeah. I always mm -hmm. say love ya. Mm -hmm. So I keep the oh, ya I see. together. You, 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 you consciously apostrophize. I do. Yes. I do. I do. <laughs> so, all right. So what are we working on here? Well, I was thinking I would just talk about some of the things from the core tour. Yeah. And because, you know, not everybody has will, will have right. had a chance to, to join mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So... The things that I have talked about the most in all of my workshops, really, it all has to do with, it. well, when it comes to core hooping, so I'm really just talking about core hooping now. Okay. Although the feet, of course, have a, you know, relationship to off-body hooping as well. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, let me just get in the middle here. So, yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, what I, what I talk about just almost all the time mm -hmm. is trying to find symmetry within the body. And we can use the hoop. The hoop is a sensing instrument, you know, so it's like we don't have to have a mirror or somebody else, right. you know, telling us what's what our body is doing. Like we can just continue to develop and refine our sense of our body through our contact with the hoop. And I learned that through my sensei Baxter, mm -hmm. who was my original te hoop teacher so many years ago. And, and that's so Jonathan Livingston? Jonathan Baxter. Livingston Baxter, yes. Yep. Of the hoop path. Yep. And um, what we did was we started with the big hoop and with the blindfold. Mm -hmm. And so I did, you know, I began these workshops also with the blindfold, what, like I started with bags, mm -hmm. and, um, and also with the big hoops because what happens there, and this is something that y'all can all try at home, especially, you know, maybe better to try at home, more fun mm -hmm. to try at home, you know, just being, getting into yourself. Like, you know, this is core hooping. It's kind of like with off-body hooping, it, you can t tend to be more focused outside yourself, especially if you're right. trying for a certain kind of physical symmetry, yeah. you know, in, in, in a camera's eye symmetry. Mm -hmm. But when we're core hooping, we really, you know, we you're need in to... touch with the hoop. We need to dive yeah, in and yeah. we need to start sensing what's going on, mm -hmm. especially if we really want to mm -hmm. start to expand our technique. So the turn, turning with the hoop, is what expands time and space all around the hoop at all right. times. So we're trying to learn how to turn with the hoop in a way that preserves symmetry and becomes easy and becomes like a second sense, you know, or, mm -hmm. a, or a sixth sense, you know, just a, you know, a mm -hmm. muscle memory mm -hmm. that um, when we're in the center of the hoop, we can think about, so from the waist down to the ankles, so all core hooping from here down, we can think about organizing our steps in a circle. So stepping in, you know, I don't have the big hoop, like normally I would yeah. be demonstrating I mean, this with a big hoop, like really slow, how as the big hoop goes around, I can turn around in a circle with my hoop. I'm turning with the current of my hoop. And just to let you guys know, this is a small space here, so um, we're using. She's using a uh, a very small hoop, about a 30 31 inch, 31 yeah. inch Poly Pro, which is a smaller, lighter hoop, which we've covered before. Mm -hmm. And I have videos that explain some of that of why you use a bigger hoop. But mm -hmm. bigger, bigger and heavier it, it is a slower rotation, so you have more time to get the move yes to understand what's going on yeah. to feel into and what's feel going it on. really feel it yes um so i'm i'm turning with the hoop and i what i want to do is think about always moving one foot back and one foot forward and so for me the simplest way to think about it is you know my hoop is going whatever direction my hoop is going i'm stepping that foot back okay so if my hoop is going to the left i'm going to be stepping my left foot back and my right foot forward. And I'm just going to continue to do that. Left foot back, right foot forward. Then when I switch currents, I flip that. Now I'm in right current. My right foot steps back, left foot steps forward. So what this does is creates a strategy wherein I'm always adding and subtracting the same amount of space to this system. You know, we want to create a system to keep the hoop aloft wherein the hoop thinks that, you know, this, this is just this kind of endless spooling spiral line. You know, the hoop just keeps following the line. And the more circular we make the line, the hoop will just continue on. The hoop will be happy as long as we are shifting our weight fully from side to side, um, stepping one foot back, one foot forward, staying in the middle mm -hmm. of the hoop. This is also another thing I talked about a whole lot in the workshops, is because we're using both feet, we're trying to use both sides of the body, and I often invoke mm -hmm. the yin-yang symbol as a way of 
really emphasizing that that backward step, which is always the one that's going to feel less certain, mm -hmm. is just as important as the forward step. We tend to start to just step forward in the hoop. Or, you know, we, we want to walk around with both feet going forward. Right. Or we want to plant, you guys can't necessarily see this, but hopefully you can infer, mm -hmm. you know, you plant one foot in the middle and then turn around it. And these work. Like a paddle turn. Yeah, these are, these are just, you know, you've got like one, one foot, one leg is always rooted. And so yeah. that leaves you like less space all the way around. So, um, I'm advocating moving both feet so that you're always in the center of this rotation. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk about the hips in a moment. Okay. But just with the feet, you've always got them going at this, you know, it's kind of like, a, like an engine. You can think about it, you know, mm -hmm. as an engine. One foot back, one foot forward. Then, when we think about the movement up here, we can continue to round and round that root chakra. So the root chakra, the lowest, you know, the crown chakra, root chakra. Root chakra circles around the center point, which is the center both of my rotation and of the hoops rotation. So I'm keeping myself in the center of the hoops rotation by using both sides of my body equally, stepping equally onto both feet. And I can feel that in the soles of my feet. So also to practice this, you know, maybe barefooted mm -hmm. on a wood floor or just, you know, anywhere where you can really feel the contact of the soles of the feet. And this is also like a super simple technique that you can practice, you know, for hours, for years. I mean, I turn, yeah. you know, without Seriously. just, just to feel into what's happening. And, you know, 999 times out of a thousand, what's happening is I'm not stepping backward because mm -hmm. there's a fear response in the body yes. when we step backward, right. you know, and that's something that we encounter. What we encounter when we hoop is that, you know, we encounter these kinds of instinctive reactions in the body. Yeah, resistance, and, if you will. <laughs> yeah, you know, just fear. I mean, it's like we have built in, you know, fear protects us right, right. from danger. And so when, you know, an object is whirring, like, you know, flying close to the face, you know, we, we the body simply yeah, wedgies. Reacts. <laughs> what? Wedgies. Yeah, exactly. Wedgies you know, and escalators. <laughs> yes, and that's a whole different thing. Yeah, yeah, getting used to the hoop moving differently. It's like maybe we've gotten used to, you know, the hoop being around the shoulders, but yeah, but an escalator feels like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. You know, but really we're we're always you know, we, we can always sort of open to we're we're always trying to open to the hoop more. Mm -hmm. Listen to the hoop. Yeah. And this is all based on yeah. You know, for me, like you know, just listening to the hoop, trying to trying to hear, like, oh, what's you know, what? How can I sustain this perfect symmetry? And really trying to create mm -hmm. a circle with my body right. as best I can. And that's going to take two halves. You know, no circle. That's you know, we're we're not talking about an oval or an egg shape. We're right. talking about a circle. Right, right. You know, like an oval or an egg shape will get the hoop around, and you can do things with it. Yeah. But you're not going to have the maximum right. amount of space and off, opportunity. And your time is, is going to be slightly off, which will throw off the hoop. You, it'll go down faster if your timing isn't rhythmic and consistent. Exactly, because, yeah, because time, that's what's lost, you know, with, with, mm -hmm. with symmetry, when symmetry goes. That's, mm -hmm. what, that's what is lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a funny thing to say about uh, with the, the experience of doing the barefoot stuff. So I did that this morning out on the concrete. And that was uh, much better here. Because also I know what's out on our concrete here, but we were hooping out at um, Cheeseman Park yesterday. And That's I took so off my shoes, and I, I normally don't do that because I'm one of those people that I'm the, like the only geek that leaves their shoes and socks on or I'll be hooping in boots. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for it because I've, I've danced behind belly dancers before who have lost glass beads off of their comp. Co costumes oh and so you're dancing barefoot on that it's not a good idea or on wood floors that are shredded mm -hmm. where you don't think that they're shredded but right. yesterday I was like oh this is great this is great and then I stepped on somebody's used band-aid and I was like ew and I went oh, yeah. and put my shoes and socks back on because it was yeah. a public park but it was just really funny I'm like and that's why I'm like well, as weird as I am doing my thing but at home yeah definitely try the the barefoot thing because mm -hmm. it really does ground you we me, my mm -hmm. husband and I have mm -hmm. been researching this out lately about how like a lot of times when we're wearing shoes we have rubber between our feet and the ground so we're really not being in contact with the earth yes so they actually have they sell like grounding mats and different things oh, like yeah. that or you could just go and take your shoes off and run through the grass yeah right you don't it's have to buy and easy and you don't have to use the mat. internet <laughs> So. You can just go outside. Right. <laughs> go play outside like your mom told you. <laughs> no playing ball in the house. You can hoop in the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, so you were doing some um, of that. Well, I can talk about shoulder hooping okay. as well. Okay, sure, sure, sure. So, and this is an old school Baxter method as well for getting up to shoulders from mm -hmm. the waist. And um, one of the things that I've concentrated on a lot is expanding 
the step. So you can't see, but now my feet are shoulder distance. And so, yeah, so you might not be able even, to see the full step. Even just a little past shoulder distance. Yeah, just wider, wider steps. And keeping yeah. those steps wide, but you're still going to be stepping your leading foot back and your following foot forward. So whatever direction you're going in, that foot is going to step back. The other foot's going to step forward. This time the steps are going to be bigger because we're trying to sustain the hoop with a bigger center, a wider, you know, this is now going to be the center of the hoop. That's going to already take up this much space. So I have to create more space underneath the current so that I can interact with the hoop smoothly up here. And the current is the direction that the hoop is going in, just to translate. So yes, sometimes we have our hoop Sorry. jargon. Yeah, so I really... If there's yeah. any newbies out there, we don't want to lose you in the yeah. dust. <laughs> yeah, please don't go. <laughs> so what I recommend, and this is also for people who are trying to get into second current newly, mm -hmm. you know, let's say you, you're, you feel comfortable, and um, maybe you should move as I... Because, yeah. yeah, watch out and, like, shove that chair back yeah, or something. Yeah, this, I'm getting And this then we can, yeah, because I think, yeah... So, he, so I'm starting now this bigger step, this wider step, and to come up to the shoulders, I'm gonna use my leading arm, so I'm turning to the right, therefore I'm gonna use my right arm, and I'm going to paddle, you guys hopefully know what a paddle is, I'm gonna reach across my body and use a huge paddle to lift the hoop up, like so, or and then, yeah. or when I get up here, if you don't here, know what a paddle is, think of using a paddle for a boat. Here's a like paddle. It's here's a, big, a paddle. Big orange. Here's a leading paddle. It this is what a leading movement. paddle looks like at the waist. So yeah. this is just a regular old leading paddle that we might use, you know, to accelerate the hoop. But we can combine the leading paddle with the turn and lift the hoop up onto the shoulders. And notice that I immediately begin to engage my opposite arm, my following arm. And I continue turning. Those are the two most important things that the transition up to shoulders are going to need. For the feet to continue to move with these big steps and for the following arm to engage with the hoop just like the leading arm. So we tend to, what we tend to do when we start to shoulder hoop is A, stop, and B, use only the leading arm. So this happens. You know, so that's what happens when we stop and just start using the leading arm. However, when we continue to turn, and when we answer the leading arm, which pushes forward with the following arm, this opposite side, which pushes back into the hoop and brings it around, then we see that we can maintain a smooth shoulder current, even in a very small space. And it looks so graceful. Look at all those hearts flying across the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually, so, you know, next... Next, you, you know, you work on standing still. Standing still with the hoop. Yeah. You know, you can also, you can stand still for a few revolutions. And then, you know, so this is going to be like the, the challenge, you know, the workout, yeah. hoop workout challenge. But, but they're all, you know, now, now you're not using the turn, mm -hmm. but you are still using I always say that turning is your arms. best friend while, while hooping. Oh, yeah, for real, for sure. Absolutely. Now, I've got a que question for you as, as I'm observing this. Um, when you are doing your chest tubing, because a lot of times people need that translated as well, and, and mm -hmm. a lot of us do it differently. Mm -hmm. So like for instance, I've taught where you can do a chest rotation mm -hmm. or the side to side, mm -hmm. or you know, like in, any push-pull points the mm -hmm. opposite direction. Mm -hmm. How do you do it? I've also heard it mm -hmm. described in contact points. So, so meaning when your arms are out of the current? Uh, or when, when, you're, you're, when you're just shoulder hooping. When you're shoulder, shoulder hooping, hooping. yeah. So to be engaging the chest while shoulder hooping. Okay. Okay. So, the, so the chest is going to be extension of the arm movement. So again, so uh, you know, and I'm just going to show sort of, um, you know, without without the hoop moving. But what is going to happen with the arms here is, you know, the leading arm paddles the hoop up, the following arm brings it back around. So each of those movements is going to correspond to a chest opening. With the leading arm, you're opening the chest forward, rounding into the hoop. When you catch the hoop then with the following arm to bring it back around, you then okay. open the back okay. of the heart. And I think of it as the front of the heart and the back of the heart, and the front of the heart and the back of the heart. Because, so, so that you... That's brilliant. Yes. So that, yes, and then, you know, then your whole body is, yeah. you know, kind of moving. And then another great exercise to do here, of course, as you're still always turning, is to lift out one arm at a time. So, you know, now I'm lifting, you might take my leading arm out of the current and go back. And my following arm. 
And, you know. So and then you're back to, like, what most of us do, which is, like, one, one, one. Right, but you can, I'm saying, like, you yeah. can try in each current. You can tell, you can mm -hmm. start to figure out, oh, right. where am I not wanting to engage right. with the hoop? If you separate out your arms and see, like, what arm is working, how much, you know? Mm -hmm. And this also just improves your shoulder hooping, to isolate yes. each arm in each current. So, yeah, and that's what, mm -hmm. you know, you can just see, you know, be, be more honest with yourself. On a personal note, um, for those who have, haven't tried show, um, chest hooping, I do an exercise for warm-ups where we just do just the chest isolation, and that's a belly dance move. Yeah. And I found that when I got good at shoulder and chest hooping, my, my chest isolations were like oh, spot yeah. on. So it's a really yeah. good core activity. Um, well, you know, especially when you're, you know, pulling everything in. I don't say suck everything mm -hmm. in because it's not about like wherever you're, you mm -hmm. know, where your belly's hanging out or whatever. It's not about that. It's about pulling all and engaging and activating the muscle. So pulling everything into the core. Mm -hmm. But I really loved your mm -hmm. heart analogy too because mm -hmm. I use a lot of like visual analogies mm -hmm. so that people remember them and see them and take them in mm -hmm. and put them in part of their toolbox. Yeah. So they access it and practice totally. this right away so that you can get some of these maneuvers yes and put them in your toolbox yeah totally yeah totally and you know belly dance is awesome you know any kind of dance mm -hmm. informs any other kind of dance is my experience but you know belly dance is really i just took a class um, at lightning in a bottle with zoe jakes of beats <gasps> and taken zoe is awesome oh my god it was she like, is a humor master oh teaching. my god she, she's a her. great teacher her. if you ever have a chance to take yes. a belly dancing class Seriously. I mean, I would take, I think, I wonder if she has online classes, because it was just so, oh, so wonderful to belly and dance. I got it's beautiful. A, speaking mm -hmm. of Zoe Jakes, I got a brilliant piece of advice, because I was a newbie belly dancer at the time, mm -hmm. and Zoe Jakes was coming to town, mm -hmm. and we have this really great um, uh, thing here that Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Asher puts on called Elevation, and it's a whole tribal belly dance festival. It has all kinds of belly dance in it. Anyway, mm -hmm. Zoe Jakes was coming mm -hmm. and doing a workshop, and I said, you know, if I sign up for a workshop, will it be, like, over my head? Will I get anything out of it? Or, you know, I, it was like, you know, I was a little hesitant to mm -hmm. sign up and spend the money, you know, I, you know, because it's very famous, wonderful, magical, mystical, mm. extremely talented, mm. high-level person was yeah. coming, and I'm like, I don't know if I can hang with that or not, because <laughs> I just, I, I sort of know this, you know, or whatever. And uh, she said, you will get out of it what you you can get out of it, yeah. what you what you get out of it will be mm -hmm. worth it to you. So mm -hmm. um, I forget the words she used. I've, I've mm -hmm. had better ways to tell mm -hmm. that story mm -hmm. before. But, you know, in other words, take mm -hmm. the classes even if you don't think you mm -hmm. are at that level totally. yet. Because also she, one of the things that I learned from her class was she was a brilliant teacher. And I love that she taught with humor. She didn't make anybody feel bad. Everybody totally. felt welcome and, you know, very... It's very you know, important. And, and there's a lot of high level, like people that I, I can't do what they do. And, you know, they've been studying for like 30 years of doing these, these moves. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, being in a room with them, mm -hmm. you can feel about this small mm -hmm. on, the, on the experience scale. And, you know, and, you know, and like as hoopers, we're trying mm -hmm. not to, you know, we always say, don't compare yourself to others. And, mm -hmm. you know, we kind of do, even though, you know, we, we're not supposed to, but... Just people do that. Yeah, you know, but, um, you know, on one hand, it's a way to see what's out there, what's been done, mm -hmm. um, and to aspire to something. So, you know, use the the um, the admiration of somebody else's style or moves mm -hmm. in a way that is helpful to you, not as a comparison, I'm not good enough, because mm -hmm. you just throw that out the window. You guys know me by now. You know, I'm all about positivity. You know, as much as you can, try mm -hmm. try and get that in there. Mm -hmm. But you know, do what you can when you can. You know, there's days where mm -hmm. like different things may be in. You know, I call it. I, mm -hmm. I liken it to yoga, and they call it yoga practice, not yoga perfection. Yes. There's days where you'll you'll get balance moves or flexibility things mm -hmm. one day, and then the next day not so much. Yeah. Same thing with hooping. There are days where I have I can do um, uh, uh, sustained spinning, mm -hmm. and there are days where my head just goes. <laughs> not happening. So I, right. I work on something else or I adapt it in such a way that works for me. But I found mm -hmm. what you're doing with the core work, mm -hmm. um, you know, and you, it, it, on one level you can look at it of like, oh, core work is so basic. And I'm just watching you and, and seeing how, mm -hmm. you know, you can take a basic thing and make it so intricate mm -hmm. with all the, the details of it that are just so amazing. Mm -hmm. So 
um, like mm. just doing that, that mm. is just looks so fluid the way you're doing that. Now I have to go practice that too. Mm -hmm. So because it's like, oh, that's just so beautiful. And, and I just want to shout out Baxter again because you know starting hooping yeah. with Baxter was like the greatest gift that the universe ever gave me, and. You know, because he always, you know, I would always notice, because I used to take class with him like five times a week, because I, you know, because we were a couple, and so I was going to like all three of his weekly classes, and I would go to the workshops on the weekend, and he would go. And he lived in the same place, too, yeah. so. <laughs> and we same still, area. And he's yeah. still my best friend. Yes. <laughs> and so, but, you know, I would just notice that, like, he was never afraid to, to delve more and more closely into mm -hmm. A technique and, you know, just work on something very, very simple. And I find that, you know, when I go to hoop gatherings and workshops, like, often it's the simpler exercises that I get more out of and, like, mm -hmm. the, these sort of really breaking it down. And so I became, you know, as a teacher, and, in fact, it was very hard to start as a teacher. It was very intimidating, you know, by that example. Like, how can I contribute something, you know, when, when there's he already has this skill, but then, you know, you realize that there's so many different uh, ways that right. people can yes. that we can experience things, but just learn from all the masters. Totally, but I was or like, even not a master, even a beginning teacher can have. Yes. I, I used to go to beginning gar cartooning classes, and people go, "You're a professional cartoonist. Why would you take? Why would you be?" In? I said, "Because you might have a pen mm -hmm. that I don't know about, or you may right. have a way of doing a brush stroke that I don't know about." Yes, totally. Because of your style, you may it's think it's kind of like with, like like learning wedgies and escalators. It's like you know what? There's new techniques in hooping. I mean, you can still. Yes. You know, yeah, you can still go on with it, and you can, but, well, back to the point, though, of, but the, as, as teachers, but, you know, because I want to support that point, that, like, remembering, as teachers, you can never be too simple. Like, don't assume that students know, like, just because you know, and it, right. it can get hard as a teacher, you know, and as a, as a you know, more experienced super, because you overcome right. these, you know, these little, these milestones, but then it can be really hard to remember, and that was another thing about Baxter, like, he would always, he could remember, you know, he remain familiar with, like, the beginner experience. I think for, you know, mm -hmm. just having so many beginner hoopers coming through and, you know, just really remembering what it feels like to be embodied with the hoop and that we're always going back to mm -hmm. that place. And, and because that, sen you know, that place of, like, that sensitive place, that that's also the wellspring of new mm. technique, you know. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> you Ooh, might have the sparking next. Sparking your new The ideas. next wedgie. You might invent the next wedgie. Yeah, yeah, yes. Seriously. It is true. Uh, on that note, too, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, my hoop journey was such that I took, uh, my hoop mama is Anne Dellinger. Uh, oh, yes, Havens. Yes, yes. Havens now, yes. And, I uh, miss her, uh, yes. She, she's still local here. I haven't yes. seen her in oh a really God, long time. This, this is the nice thing about fa Facebook. But I took a workshop from her, and mm -hmm. I was completely hooked and addicted. But I just worked on hooping on my own for a year. I got some DVD. didn't dawn on me to go to YouTube. Back then, YouTube wasn't as big as it is now. It, it is, it was a little mm -hmm. bit, but um, I went to the library and got DVDs. Mm -hmm. So I just worked with some DVDs and stuff like that and got some basic stuff like that. But then um, somebody told me of a, a hooper that was coming through and doing a workshop in Boulder. So mm -hmm. Boulder's a little ways from here, um, from Denver. Yeah, from the Denver Lakewood area. So anyway, uh, another friend of mine who was a belly dancer friend, she's like, I'm going to go do this. And so it happened to be Baxter's oh, workshop. Oh, yeah. So Baxter was my very first. See, look at how all of this goes full circle. Well, I saw Natalie yesterday. Yes, Baxter. totally. Baxter was your first. Baxter yes. was my first. Baxter was my, not Maybe my first in the us. same way, but <laughs> yes. Baxter. <laughs> You were doing that as a lot of hoopers. No, just kidding. Just kidding. That <laughs> no, was we, funny. We'll, that was we'll just funny. Suspend that joke. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but, yeah, he did. And I've seen so many people transformed by his workshops. Yes. In such a deep core level because one of the techniques that he does in there is he calls it going blind. He has people wear a blindfold. And I still bring up this technique, and I always credit the sources. Yes. Unless I've learned from several teachers the same thing. Yes. Um, or I know the original source mm -hmm. of something, mm -hmm. but um, it, that that was a particular thing for Baxter. Um, I, mm -hmm. And I like to bring it up because, especially when people are having a hard time, or just giving them another alternative of mm -hmm. how to hoop, mm -hmm. is just close your eyes and get in contact with your hoop, because as I say it, the, um, the hoop, you know, it's based on your timing and your consistency, and just you're, you're, you are trying to get moves with your brain with your reaction time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, those little signals are like a, a millisecond apart. Well, by a millisecond, you've thrown the hoop off by just a touch, mm -hmm. and you may not have, the mm -hmm. hoop may go down, or it may do something other than what you planned on it doing. Mm -hmm. But by closing your eyes, you're way more in touch with it, and you take out 
almost like the the overthinking process mm -hmm. of it and mm -hmm. you get in touch with the feeling process of it mm -hmm. which you know is basic you know mm -hmm. what a lot of hooping is for a lot of people mm -hmm. you know and then of course we get techy and tricky and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. you can definitely go off on those tangents as well mm -hmm. but yeah getting that core and that just I call it lusciousness mm -hmm. you know just or some people call it sensuality of getting just really in touch you know you're talking about the root chakra that mm -hmm. that's about the the basis of basis mm -hmm. of getting in touch with everything because mm -hmm. it all starts with there survival and, yeah mm -hmm. it goes up from there so mm -hmm. This has mm -hmm. been some really fascinating information. Well, mm -hmm. take us out with some more. I would love to put right. our music, but well, I'm not going to get oh, out of copyright stuff. Oh, the stuff. licensing! Yeah. Oh my God, why don't we play? We could play. What could we play? Can we play? We could play one of my brother's songs. <laughs> well, or you could just jam too. I'll just do some breaks. Yeah, and, there um, you go. Yeah, she does because some I was. <laughs> I want. I just want everybody to notice how I'm twisting in and out of the breaks, and that's a big part of how to get the the speed you know, and the, the tightness is really, you know, exaggerating mm -hmm. this twist. The twist, yes. Yeah. I'm big on the twist. Yeah, this is, I like this little space. This I is know, isn't it fun? I just read it, read in my office. <laughs> Actually, I did it. We did it twice last year, but it got gutted out last year the second time. So new flooring, the old carpeting went, the paint got redone, and it's all pretty in here. And now Ooh. I've tchotchkeed it up. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. It's it awesome. Silly stuff. Yes. You did a really cool thing yesterday huh? where you were doing, mm -hmm. and I was watching you out the corner of my eye, and I was like, oh, that's so neat, and I mm. want to get Leanne's video. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Leanne. You were doing, yeah, yes. Leanne, so you were doing something where you did, like, a little jawbreaker break, and you switched the direction of That was, you know, I that was a kind of a fake out. This is, I'm just, these okay. are new experiments, but yeah. Dizzy Dynamic, if you don't know Dizzy oh. Dynamic, she's fabulous She's too. so amazing, yeah, she's definitely, like, one Speaking of my biggest of people that crushes. come to Denver, we have such a great hoop community here. And who, where hoop, hoopers love to come here. Yeah, not to say that there, there's yes, this is a great hoop teachers. Community. Please come to Denver. This yeah. is such a great flow community. Yes. I mean, I met so many people. I met so many just flow people, not even hoopers. Right. You know, there's just so much going on here. Right. So yeah. yes, yes, yeah, it's awesome. But Dizzy Dynamic, she has innovated a lot with this axis spin. And um, yeah, I'm not going to hit the lamp. You want a smaller hoop? No, no, no. Okay. I, I can't even do it. I mean, oh, I've been okay. trying. This is something that I still, I still really can't. I mean, I'm getting to where, I mean, I can do it across okay. my chest, yeah. which I'm not going to do in here, but, um, Cause I but yeah, this those jawbreakers are like a nice small one. I can't, no, no, there's oh, no, no way okay. I'm going to do it in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but she has been doing the, you know, jawbreakers, like, okay. you know, changing and then, and, and some rolls. I mean, I still haven't, you know, I, I'm, like I said, I'm still working on yeah. it, but, but I have been doing these, you know, like tossing it okay. with. To, to, you know, the, the oh, chin, and I, okay. and I do some, like, you know, I've done on my, on my neck, like, you know, chin, chin breaks. And, okay. You know, things that are kind of related, but not, you know, not, these axis spins, they're just very tight and clean on mm -hmm. the vertical axis. Okay. Along, like, the neck, and then, you know, yeah. Some Kids, radians. do this with a smaller, lighter hoop. <laughs> <laughs> not a big, heavy hoop, because you're using yes. the neck. Yes, and exactly. if you do have a bigger, heavier hoop, and you must use that, um, do just a little bit of that. So that's just a little safety. Yeah, aspect. you really can have a hoop that is too heavy yeah. for the neck. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. just bear in mind, like I, you know, I'm the biggest fan of like the, the big hoops for core hooping, but up on the neck, you really want yeah. something lighter. Yeah. Yeah. And this, you know, I don't advocate the toy store hoops much, but this might be one case where you could use that or try with it because mm -hmm. you're also not going to hurt yourself as much with it. It may not be the most effective hoop than a pro hoop, but it's better than using a big heavy hoop. So mm -hmm. give that a try if you need to, you know, like, you know, I, we only have so much budget mm -hmm. sometimes that, mm -hmm. you know, somebody, I posted a video and she said, you have so many hoops. And I said, that's part of them. Those are the yeah. ones for class. I'm like, you haven't even seen the office ones mm -hmm. or the whole work, hoop workshop downstairs. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. so lots of hoops because, you know, mm -hmm. even I brought extra hoops to the park yesterday thinking mm -hmm. there is inevitably people that come that, you know, weren't, that weren't necessarily planning to be there and they don't mm -hmm. have hoops and, mm -hmm. you know, we always need some extra hoops. Mm -hmm. And so, and I ended up using my bigger, heavier hoops that oh, I don't yeah. normally give to other people to mm -hmm. use. Yeah. And they still were smaller than yours. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. By like a lot. Wow. Interesting. So, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I had like a 
mm, I want to say like a 40 inch half inch. Okay, yeah. That was nice because it was mm -hmm. big. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of time, but you know, and then I, I had to pull out my like regular polypro like this mm -hmm. and, because it's just like one that I go to. It's like my, mm -hmm. you know, we all mm -hmm. have our like go to hoops that it, you know, it's just your favorite. You know, it's kind of like an old pair of jeans for some people. I don't totally. wear jeans anymore, but mm -hmm. you know, like, I know. Apparently, either. they're comfortable now. Nothing but yoga pants. I'm <laughs> in <into laughs> leggings. I'm obsessed with leggings these days. I have. It's taking. It's taken over one drawer, but it's going into another drawer. I have mm -hmm. Leggings and bikini tops. For okay, me. yeah. So, amen. <laughs> <laughs> and cutie booty shorts over here. So harmonic threads. Oh, nice. These are nice. harmonic threads. Yes. Well, you can't. Well, so if you could, yeah. Harmonic threads. Um. My dear friend Olive Marie's company, and they're, they're on Etsy. Her mic. And she's a she, lovely hooper. As she's well. a beautiful hooper, and she makes clothing for hoopers, and they're cotton and hemp. Oh, nice. And you know, just beautiful stuff, and it totally, you know, stands up to time. You know, mm -hmm. you can, it's made to be flowed in. Yes. Clothing for flow, and fl fire, fire. I was just gonna stuff. say, and if you uh, do fire. fire spinning, mm -hmm. the, you, it's very important to have um, fire safe clothing, which are natural fibers. Exactly. And doesn't all mean, of her stuff yeah. is that. Yes. Doesn't mean they don't catch on fire, but it means that they don't melt to your skin if it does. Yes. So and you can put it out quicker. So mm -hmm. um, and, you know, fire safety is a whole nother ball game. But yeah, it's very important to have clothing that is multifunctional. Mm -hmm. If you just buy a good piece quality of. Uh, quality piece of clothing like this is cute but it's so polyester i would never uh -huh. fire hoop in this i'd be like i'd go up like a little uh roman candle like, <laughs> you know <laughs> so, <laughs> but, so not smart to hoop in I, actually i'm taking over for another person who um was uh he i saw him perform two years in a row and the first time i saw him perform and this is just a side note and I'm, i don't even remember his name but i saw the same guy twice and he did not have a fire safety. Mm. Rule number one right. of fire spinning, have a fire safety. Yep. And the second thing was he wasn't wearing, uh, he was wearing like a little suit, you know, punk polyester type of uh, thing. And I'm like, yeah. oh. mm -hmm. and then his fuel was like, Gee, you're mm -hmm. performing around small children. I didn't even want to ask him if he had fire insurance, yeah. you know, like performer's insurance, which you have to have mm -hmm. if you're going to, uh, a, take money, and B, perform out in a public space. Right. And for a lot of reasons, for liability and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just a good uh, good professional practice to have. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, he didn't have these things. I, I tried to get him hooked up with, I'm like, here's some people that you need to talk to about this stuff. Mm -hmm. And the second year, I, I was so, like, livid because it was like, Dude, you know, I understand, you know, maybe you're a newbie getting into this, but now you're you're taking more money for this and still doing this. And you have bad practices and little children are watching what you're doing mm -hmm. and thinking that this is okay, which that's this is where I have conscious fire it. spinning. It's con very it's conscious. Mm -hmm. Yes, so many people have gotten hurt by, you know, I mean even um, experienced hoopers, we still get burned, we burn our nostril hairs mm -hmm. out, and I, I've had my hair go up on flames mm -hmm. before, so I have different fire safety from the mm -hmm. hair now. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't damage it, luckily, but, you know, it, that can happen. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I talked to the organizer, I pulled him out, and I said, listen, um, he is not spinning very safely, um, and, uh, you know, I pointed out the things that he was, you know, and I said, he, you, you, you know, and then all of a sudden, I didn't see the guy. And I was like, oh, crap, I just, like, got a guy mm. fired. And I'm like, I, I feel bad that he lost income, but I don't feel bad because hopefully he learned a lesson about safety because it, it's ultimately about safety because some, sometimes he's going to have... safety, not only of you, but the people around you. Exactly, and mm -hmm. small children because, if you know, and he had a fire extinguisher there too, which yeah. I know you're supposed to have one there for, like, the fire mm -hmm. department kind of purposes and stuff like that, but if you ever hit somebody with a fire extinguisher, mm -hmm. it sucks out all your oxygen, so the person that you're hitting with fire extinguisher mm -hmm. can't breathe. Mm -hmm. So you need to, like... Mm. think that one through mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you have it there kind of for looks and of course if things get you know mm -hmm. bigger but there's mm -hmm. other ways to put a person out and anyway mm -hmm. didn't necessarily need to go off on a fire tangent there but <laughs> i'm so glad that harmonic threads does beautiful yes. clothing that yes. is also fire safe and yes. hoopable and and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and not lots of stuff hanging off there that gets all tangled up you know yes hooping we need our our, our easy easy wear so yes and comfy Yes. Because then we all like to kick back after working and hooping really hard and mm -hmm. having lots of fun and, and mm -hmm. coming up with new things and imagining all kinds of things. Yes. So, yeah. So find your hoopers out there that, you know, perhaps a mentor, perhaps, you know, um, I, I heard this, like we were all talking about our um, hoop crushes or hoop mm. idols mm -hmm. or hoop, um, 
you know, I call them inspirations or yes. inspirations yes. of like people not just to like go gaga after. Mm -hmm. I mean, I even had somebody yesterday go, I stalk you on Instagram, which is, you know, a funny thing and a creepy mm -hmm. thing at the mm -hmm. same thing. But, but, you know, I, I understood she was being nice about that and stuff like that. And it, it's so, it's an honored mm -hmm. uh, thing Very to much so. like, a, meet your idols of, mm -hmm. you know, meet the people that you respect in the field mm -hmm. and find out that they're real people and they're, you know, they're real humans. And, like, even just the stuff that you shared earlier mm -hmm. about your, you know, what you've gone through with the weight mm -hmm. gain, the weight loss, mm -hmm. the smoking, mm -hmm. you know, that yeah. these are real human issues. You know, I've, uh, you know, mm -hmm. y'all may, maybe know yes. about the skin cancer scar here and, you know, I'm still trying to recover from that yeah. and, and, you know, and stuff. And I'm like... Great, and sunscreen is making it itchy, so it's mm. like all inflamed again. I'm like, mm. oh, really? 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 Um, How many times do I need to, like, wow. deal with this stuff? So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, these these things mm -hmm. all make us human. So, mm -hmm. hopefully, you've gotten a lot out of this presentation today. Awesome. You've laughed, you've learned, you've hooped, you've learned some cool stuff about health and hooping. Yes. And we've done it with humor. So, yeah. we've accomplished all of the main goals. Thanks, y'all. So, <laughs> thank you so much for uh, being with us. On behalf of myself, Shay Rippinger of Hip the Hoopla, and Ann Humphreys. Thank you so much. Line and Circle. Thank you, Shay. Visit Thank her. You so much your for website having. is? Lineandcircle.com. Okay. And so you can find her at a, coming to a town near you, or you could even message her and say, please come to our town. We will find the venue for you, and you can mm -hmm. come and do this. And, and we'll on, Instagram, on, on Instagram, I'm Ann of Line and Circle. Kind okay. of a boring utilitarian okay. title but it works and i'll put the um the information up on the web post too and on the youtube um so we have the links for for and getting and we'll do the harmonic threads as okay, well okay awesome so, yeah yeah all right hey. well thank you for joining us thank you rock on peace yes up. there's the big girl shiva and Kelly. protecting kelly kelly you want to come in kelly no okay yeah. <laughs> There's Eva. There's Callie. Beautiful. I'm going to turn the camera so maybe we can see the puppies. Hi. There we go. Hi, we get the puppy cameos. Hi. So Hi, everybody wish cameo? Callie some good luck because she needs, be she's kind of going blind right now. So um, we've got some issues, health issues with that. So even dogs get too. So, but anyway, rock on. Peace out, everybody. There we go. <laughs> All right. Have a good one. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs> awesome. So she's she's having some trouble.